the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. Today is Sunday, May 15, 2022, and this is It All Began in the 70s, Season 3, Episode 23, Downtown Phoenix and the Diamondbacks. So in the middle 90s, during the period of time when I um, operated and owned and co-owned and operated the computer integration company in Arizona, um, the Major League Baseball push to bring a uh, team to town was was in full swing. <clears throat> that would be the Arizona Diamondbacks. So I got to see that process uh, and the excitement that it created uh, from the point at which it was first proposed and, and to the point that the stadium was actually uh, put up and the first games were played. Um, I actually have a brick in the um, uh, somewhere out in the front there um, in the ground where um, it says never... The, the quote I have on there is never give up. This was back in the late 90s. Uh, they were selling bricks in the uh, as a promotional thing. In the, in the front of the stadium. So that's there somewhere. I never found it. I have a copy of it on my desk, and I've carried it around for almost 25 years, I guess that's been. So it's not that I'm not familiar with um, the process of a team coming to town and all of that excitement, and um, I even ended up moving, right before I moved to Costa Rica, I ended up moving downtown into an apartment so that I could walk to the baseball park. So I do get it, being a sports fan. I do understand um, the the emotions that are tied to it, the camaraderie, the, the feeling of, um, you know, belonging to something. And I, again, I saw this entire process from concept until literally moving uh, just for the sole purpose of being able to walk to the ballpark um, you know, once the games are played, I went to the first, I think I went to the very first game actually, but I went to a lot of games there. So, um, just imagine now that that's a memory that's a little foggy now, 25 years on or however long it's been, but, um, I can go back in time and, and I can remember before that, right? It's almost like a society separates cities and the cities that have major league teams or even minor league teams, um, whether they have major airports, minor airports, all that, that, that society creates a hierarchy, a pecking order, so to speak. And, uh, you know, if you have a, if you have a major international airport and you have a major league sports team or two or three or whatever, you know, that's kind of like your standing, right? Well, <clears throat> Now, uh, the whole prospect of ASM and why, through all of these unbelievable difficulties over nearly 20 years, um, the core team, which has really pretty much remained the same people, a couple new additions over that entire period, a lot of subtractions, a couple new additions, um, you know, why we hold on to that is that that is the building process, that's the foundation, that's the idea behind the new sports economy and what sports trading will create. Um, that's not what you're going to get from gambling. And I, all you have to do to see proof positive of that is just go to Las Vegas, the gambling capital of the world, and just drive away from the strip. You don't even have to go very far these days. A couple blocks and <laughs> take a look around. So Biff's Pleasure Palace from Back to the Future part of our videos that we produce with Zach and such. Take a look at that. That's what you have with gambling, folks. Um, to make a claim otherwise, it's just, it's it's a lie. It's just a flat-out falsehood. Um, history proves that when you expand gambling, and even China knows this, that's why they, they, they're they anti-gambling. They know from history, just like anti-opium dens, anti-drugs, all the rest of that, they know from history what happens when you let these vices take hold of society, it turns it to ruin. Um, but investment, oh, so imagine that, you know, some, take the extreme example, go to 
the Congo and where they have basically nothing, but they have soccer. You know, they have they have football, they call it. Um, and imagine that excitement that, that, that would be created if anybody with a uh, an idea could put that idea before the entire world, you know, because that's what the platform will allow. And then, you know, kind of like um, GoFundMe or whatever you want to call it for creating sports leagues anywhere and then creating that kind of an excitement. Imagine a place that's never had anything going for them all of a sudden can create a world-renowned soccer league, right? With just the investment of time and energy into the into the idea and then putting together a, a prospectus and a format, you know, that we standardize and then you present that on to, to the world and then if they, if the public buys into it, uh, off you go. I mean, we already know from the period, those of you who are around the Costa Rican period, when we had many, many more leagues and and teams on the market. I mean, we had Australian rules football, rugby, um, NASCAR. Uh, some of these things didn't work as well as they, sh- you know, I wouldn't go so quickly to go back to them, but we had tennis. We had So it was much more uh, inventory. And so that the general idea of of participation by the global public in the idea of investing in sports teams was definitely made in that period of time. It it will be no less the case if we turned all that stuff back on tomorrow, but that's that's not the job. So the job to do again, this all comes back down to one thing, if to fully realize all of this vision and to see that world built around sports investing comes down to just simply publicizing a single uh, league fundraise, esports or otherwise, and then to just publish, you know, to 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 do what we know how to do. We've proven over time to get the press attention, uh, and then that's it. I mean, and, and gravity will take over, and momentum, inertia will take over from there. So, what stands in the way of that resolution of the matters that I've laid out many times? Um, there are two parts to it. Okay, it's it's not going to be just one. The accounting and stuff that's just purely doing the paperwork, the uh, tax returns and things, which we actually are working on uh, right now. And in fact, we just filed the extension request for 2022 and it was approved. I'm sorry, 2021 return. Um, so we're, there's four years there. Um, and then we go back and, and file to restore our 501c3 status. That was simply um, automatic rev- revocation. It wasn't through investigation and some action by a person. It was just an automatic trigger when that date went by and they didn't have three years of returns. It's just an automatic process. So that's really, I, that's, um, those, those are clerical matters. The bigger issue is the uh, resolution of the SEC case, which we submitted financial information on that, which is also published in the notice board, uh, which you can clearly see that um, this was, the money was spent in lots of different areas and this was not about me personally in fact if the the effective salary that I had was about fifty thousand dollars a year fully liquidated that's uh, that's barely making it in Los Angeles do your own research um, that's roommate income which is which is exactly the case um, so anyhow um, that's not it so it's SEC resolution um, those documents were submitted to the mediator last week the financial stuff which is um, based off of the raw financial. It's just as it's a sworn uh, sworn to be accurate as good as an audit. I mean, you can th- you can apply an auditor to it, in which we're still fighting with the people we paid more than ten thousand dollars years ago. Um, wouldn't give us the audit returns because they didn't want to get involved in the the SEC thing. Scared of which, ironically, is is. <laughs> I mean, they, they're going to be on the hook for that. I mean, you can't, they basically robbed us of more than $10,000 at this point, flat out stole the money. I mean, we have nothing, uh, and we paid for it. So anyhow, that's uh, old news, but that's the truth of it. Um, and then, then finally, the uh, 10-year-old matter regarding Leon's um, stripping me of my constitutional rights to defend myself, that's got to be solved, folks. That's There's not going to be any happily ever after because God's not going to allow it, and you can... You can scoff all you want, but I'm telling you, it's not going to happen. It's um, 
it's unjust to to allow me dam to to leave me damaged. I I already gave up all my stake to uh, to keep everything funded over you know but through grants and trading for services and all that. I did all that while other people kept everything they had. So and I'm fine with that. It's like what um, um, Hero Club Jeff Hazlett said. You know, pick a side. You you. It's never been a financial um, ambition of mine. It's been um, to get the idea out there. So I'm totally fine with the fact that those trades were necessary and that that's, um, you know, that that was I, I couldn't force anybody else to do anything with their stake. So I only had that to use. So I did. I used my own um, to the benefit of the entire project and it left me with nothing in my hands. OK, that's fine. But there is no leaving me upside down with a sword hanging over my head. Um rest of my life as a result. That's just, it's not going to happen. Um, the insulation has already been put in place with the SBA loan and the UCC one. So, you know, that puts up a moat around my life for 30 years, regardless of the legal status of that claim. But that claim has to be discharged. That's just an insurance policy, basically, against it actually having any impact on my life. But the tr But the reality is, that's to buy the necessary time to get rid of it until it's disposed of. Um, I'm telling you, the God of Israel, my the the whole reason this project came back to life back in 2013, 14, uh, when I said that prayer, it's just, he's not going to allow it. So, you know, you're going to have to understand that that is a key part of, of getting a return, Okay. If there's a return to be had from this project for the stakeholders, that has to be removed. It's not optional. It's not optional. And it's through no – and Alper would tell you this. Anybody involved, chat, anybody has been working on that stuff intimately for the last few years will tell you I have done nothing malicious or nothing to make it difficult or nothing to um, like enforce my will as far as, as that goes. It's just I know how the universe really works and <laughs> I know how it's happened in my life, the things that have – happened to me and have been prevented from happening to me and I'm protected. I'll just put it to you simple. There's a hedge around me. God's not going to let you get to me. So what will happen is the project will stay alive, which it has. I mean, look at the fact that the pilot market still trades tens of thousands, all, usually about 10,000 shares a day, even though the, the funding has been frozen both in and out for years. That ought to tell you something about the power of that idea by itself. That's pretty amazing. I mean, you can you can try to make fun of that, but it's, that's hard to explain. So anyhow, clerical stuff, that's uh, just a bunch of paperwork um, really to be completed by the end of the year, this year. Um, the SEC mediation, that's an ongoing process um, with the financial stuff being submitted last week. And then uh, the decade-old um, matter that should have never happened, that's got to be all put away. When that happens, then then you'll see the the magic will return. And until then, it's just going to be kind of bumping along, you know, not dead, not 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 making our goals, but not dying either. And uh, that's how it will stay until the proper, just outcomes take place, as relates to me. Um, it's not right, and it must be fixed. And um, God's just simply not going to allow anybody to profit off of my harm. It's never happened in the past, and it never will happen in the future. I can tell you story upon story upon story of, of, of people who tried to get things over on me that I didn't realize until later and only to find out that they got theirs. <laughs> they got theirs. Um, yeah, it, it does work like that. So that's the way it is. All right. Thank you for your time and attention. I'll speak with you again in two weeks. Bye now.